Okay, good morning all. Uh, my name is William Moreno and I am uh, Family Service uh, Services Associate at Woodlawn Cemetery. And uh, I, wanna, I wanna commend you all for taking this time uh, to look into uh, pre-planning for end of life arrangements, a uh, very, very important uh, task. Um, you know, we certainly at the cemetery see both sides of that. And um, when, uh, when someone passes in the family and when there's a death and arrangements have not been made um, up to that point, uh, it can be very difficult. It is very difficult on, on the family left behind. And uh, you know, what you're doing today uh, certainly is a, is a wonderful final gift to, you, to your family. Um, and you get to make these decisions together. And there are many, many benefits, which we're gonna discuss uh, regarding uh, pre-planning, just as, just as planning for anything in your life. Uh, this is one other eventuality that you, that you certainly wanna make plans for now. Okay, if, if someone were to pass today um, within hours, uh, there may be 60, 70 different items, tasks, decisions that have to be made, things that have to be tended to, people that have to be communicated with, uh, really, really gets, really gets quite hectic. And that uh, all those arrangements uh, need to come together in a, in a very short period of time. Uh, so the logistics of it are very difficult, um, as well as uh, financially, uh, that uh, you know, all comes up in one, in one shot. So that's what we'll, uh, we avoid here with pre-planning. Um, and again, many of the decisions have to be made within, within a day or two. And here we just talk about some of the different decisions regarding the funeral, regarding end of life arrangements, uh, burial arrangements, um, obituaries, insurance, et cetera. Uh, in, in, uh, in our planning guide, uh, we have a list of all these different items uh, that we'll come across later on that you'll see that need to be, that need to be tended to. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, and these, these decisions, and here's, here's the list here that we were speaking about. Uh, and it lists all the different things uh, that need to be tended to in a time when a loved one passes, um, who to notify, arrangements, uh, vital statistics is a very uh, uh, critical uh, issue compiling all those. And again, when you pre-plan, this is all things you're gonna do in advance and have ready at the time. Um, documents, certainly collect documents, bank books, marriage licenses, uh, birth certificates, et cetera. Um, and then all the different items that need to be paid for at that time. And again, uh, if you've ever had to do this once when, when a loved one has passed, you know it's it's just a blur of of activity and decisions, and uh, family members um, trying to, in the wake of someone their loved one passing, trying to decide what they would have wanted uh, and how they would have wanted it. And and this is now provides you with the opportunity to do this when everyone's here, we're all together as a family, and we can discuss these things and 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 make make our plans accordingly. Um, in many cases, uh, this will end up uh, with the wife being making the final arrangements. Uh, as you can see from the slide, statistically across the country, 70% uh, of cases, uh, the wife survives the husband. And uh, again, this is not something that, that you want your, 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 your wife or your husband uh, to have to deal with suddenly, all at the end, all at once. Um, this is something you want to do together, which is what we're going to talk about today. Um, and in, in terms of planning and, and, and prearranging, um, there may be there may be some hesitancy or maybe some concern within the family or some difficulty in this particular topic and this particular subject in terms of pre-planning. Uh, but it's it's a trend that 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 many families are moving towards, uh, and 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 certainly the children. Uh, of parents as well, uh, in surveys and polls that we've done, you know, across the nation, uh, children strongly encourage their parents to to pre-plan uh, in this in this manner. Um, so this is something that's that's becoming a very active trend. Okay, four major benefits that we list out here of pre-planning, and these are all things uh, that uh, that you want to be aware of, and that and that. 
and that you'll see as we start going through the process these benefits how they're very they're very tangible and they're very real um, as we were just discussing before this is something you want to do with your loved one uh, you don't want to wait till after the fact and then wonder what exactly they wanted how exactly they wanted it uh, and this is, this is something now you can do together uh, and that's a big uh, peace of mind, a big solace to, to most couples. Um, you can eliminate emotional overspending. And in terms of the whole financial aspect of it, um, end of life arrangements are not inexpensive uh, between funeral, between end of life property, you know, burial, cremation, uh, whichever route you decide to go. Uh, it's not inexpensive. And um, one of the things with, with services, and end of life property, burial property is today is the least expensive it will ever be today. Like, like everything else, uh, year by year, it's going to go up. And, you know, so if you pre-plan five years from now, you're going to pay more. And 10 years from now, you're going to pay more. And if you wait and at the time of someone passes, uh, you're going to be paying top dollar at that time. Uh, and, and, and it's a substantial differences in terms of the increases. And this is something you could lock in today's prices and a huge financial benefit. And then finally, when all this is done, and this is, this is such a common reaction that most families have uh, when they sit with us for a while, we go through the process, you know, the questions, they ask, they make their decisions, they make their decisions together and they execute those decisions. There is just always this tremendous sense of relief and sense of this, this peace of mind that comes uh, and it's, it's visible, it's tangible. You can see it. And like when it gets done, my families would be like, good, I'm, I'm so glad that's done. You know, you can see the shrug of the shoulders, the woof, glad that's done. And um, so that, that's really a wonderful, uh, wonderful benefit of pre-planning. Uh, so in terms of, in terms of pre-planning, you have the uh, funeral homes uh, and they will tend to things like caskets and transportation and viewing at the funeral home. Uh, cemeteries uh, is where you will make your end of life final arrangements, your burial arrangements, your, your cremation uh, memorialization arrangements, and that you'll do at the cemetery. Um, so you'll, you'll get those in place first, make your end of life choices in terms of burial space, in terms of cremation space, what you decide, and then you go to the funeral home and make all the arrangements following there and put those things in place. Um, so in terms of pre-planning at the cemetery for a final rest in place, uh, two options, below ground and above ground. Okay. Now, you know, it's funny, many people often use the phrase when they talk about in-ground traditional, uh, whereas uh, in terms of longevity, uh, the, the much more traditional uh, burial method is, is above ground. Uh, obviously, Jesus was buried above, above ground. Uh, you see here the Taj Mahal. That's that's a that's a mausoleum. That's a private mausoleum, uh, uh, and and you know millennium ago, uh, and the pyramids as well. Uh, all above ground mausoleum uh, burials. So so the tradition of above ground goes back uh, a couple of millennium. Um, some wonderful things about above ground. Uh, you have the option of a uh, companion above ground, uh, just, just as you do in ground, but uh, you can see the two different configurations of companion uh, crypts, a back front, side by side. Um, and you can see from, from our diagrams here uh, that above ground is clean, it's ventilated, steel reinforced, uh, all those things for longevity uh, and really keeps a pristine environment uh, for the remains of your loved one. Um, again, one of the benefits of, of above ground and especially indoor, and, and when it comes to above ground, we have both indoor and outdoor uh, cemeteries have available. Um, and indoor, in terms of visiting, we're in the Northeast and we get weather rain, snow, et cetera, cold weather. Uh, so the comfort of visiting indoors uh, is really appreciated by many uh, when, they, when they come uh, you know, throughout the year. Uh, and then there are private mausoleums, which we talked about the Taj Mahal, that 
he created for his for his for one of his wives. Um, but we do have woodland here. We can uh, accommodate a private mausoleum. And in that regard, what you do is you pick out a piece of land and then build the mausoleum from there. And that option is, is certainly available. Um, <clears throat> now, one of the things that's become very popular today, uh, and a lot of people going in this direction, is, is cremation, certainly. Um, and uh, you know, the Catholic Church uh, recently has approved cremation uh, as an end-of-life option and as a memorialization option. Uh, so the Catholic Church is, is, is on board with that as well now. Uh, and uh, in cremation, end-of-life memorialization, again, several different options. Uh, we'll look through a couple of them here. On this particular side, slide, uh, is a granite bench, uh, which is on a, on a piece of land, and the, the cremains are in the bench. Um, we have a Brookside cremation garden, uh, beautiful running brook, uh, runs down through the cemetery out to the Bronx River. And uh, along the side are both rocks and in-ground uh, niches uh, blended into the landscape and, and into rocks uh, for the cremains of, of your loved one. And then uh, finally, we have the granite front and glass front niches in, in, a, crematory, in, in a, a community mausoleum. And these will be, uh, you know, the, the glass people like that, as you can see, you could really personalize it with uh, personal effects from the person, photos, et cetera. And the granite niches are very dignified, simple memorialization, name and years. And as you can see, people choose to personalize those with, with a photo or with flowers, uh, and that can all be done. Uh, so when it comes to cremation, memorialization, uh, you do have several options, okay? Uh, one of the other things to be aware of in terms of cremation is, uh, you want to seek out uh, a cremation with confidence provider. And that is an organization, uh, a cemetery that is vetted by this cremation with confidence organization and audited uh, just to make sure that all the procedures are in line and as they should be with cremation. Uh, so we always recommend, you know, to, to uh, look for a cremation with confidence provider uh, when you're doing your cremation. The other thing is in terms of life insurance, um, you know, we, we, we usually get life insurance with the intent of leaving uh, life insurance uh, money for our loved ones, for them to go on with their life and help them financially with their lives. Uh, you don't want that, um, you know, necessarily used up on, uh, on, on, you know, final arrangements. So the pre-planning option gives you years, you know, to, to manage that, that financing payment plans. And you could you know, make a plan to, to make the financial aspects of this uh, much easier to deal with. Um, and of course, just in, in planning, uh, we, we plan in life. You know, people are planners and we plan for all these things. Uh, if you see up on the screen here, car insurance as well. We buy car insurance in case we have an accident. Uh, retirement, uh, you know, theft insurance in case our house gets robbed. Uh, these are things that, that some of these may happen, but yet we plan for them. Certainly we all know we're all gonna pass it sometime. That's a, that's a definite. And, uh, you know, so why not, why not plan for the inevitable when, uh, when there's so much better option in so many different ways? Um, and again, this just touches back on the benefits of uh, pre-planning, uh, which we which we discussed before, uh, and and which are many, and which are many. Um, two resources uh, that you want to access um, is uh, you want to have some type of, of planning guide for your end of life, and in there would include all the information. Uh, financial information, military history, military uh, um, insurance, financial, uh, end of life, funeral wishes, end of life arrangements that you've made. Uh, this planning guide, it's kind of like one place where you can have all this information that when you pass, it's, it's easy for your loved one, you know, who you want contacted when you pass, all in this one personal planning organizer uh, to help your loved ones 
uh, left behind, you left your wife, your husband, um, to, to uh, navigate at that time and, and have a one-stop place where all the information is that they're going to have to access very quickly. Um, and the living will kid. Um, oh, and, and our, and our uh, you know, personal planning guides, planning guides, they can come in, you know, for couples, for singles, Spanish language. So you want to be able to access those. Um, and a living will kit. And, and this is, is not um, uh, legal documents in that sense, but it's informational. Most of these documents you want to put together with an attorney, but this kind of walks you through the process of, uh, of understanding what, what documentation, what legal documents you want to have in place uh, for end of life and uh, for healthcare, healthcare proxies, things of that nature. And, and, and this living will kit. Uh, talks you through all that, so you can you can again uh, put those things together now with an attorney and have an idea, a good idea of what you need to do. Um, both of these, the living will kit, the personal planning guide, uh, we certainly we have them here and they're available to you. Um, I think if Melinda, if you could put my email uh, maybe into where they can, uh, where anyone could access it, where everyone can access it, you can. Sure. Uh, Ahead, um, I just wanted to interrupt you a moment, if I could, with sure. your questions. Oh, sure. Yeah, questions. Absolutely. Thank you. One was, uh, one question is, can you pay for cremation in advance? Yes. Mm -hmm. The other question, which I'm not sure um, about your ability to answer, but can you address what to do when a deceased family member had expressed a desire to be buried in their home country, a U.S. territory? How does the transportation of the body and receipt in the home country work? Right. So you would, in that case, you would you would uh, work with two funeral homes, funeral directors. You'd work with a funeral director here, and then you would work with a funeral director. Uh, wherever the home country is, and they would facilitate that that transportation and that move between the two. Thank you. That was it for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 uh, you know, like they always say, there there are no silly questions or no wrong questions or no. So if anyone uh, if anyone has any 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 other questions, uh, certainly, um, you know, feel 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 free and ask away. Um, but yeah, so that, that email, Melinda put that email uh, where you can all access it. And um, if you'd like to access either of these uh, books that we have, any of these guys that we have, the Living Well Kid or the Personal Planning Guide, we can certainly make arrangements to get those to you. Uh, you know, just shoot me an email. And uh, like I said, if anyone has any other questions at this point, certainly love to field any questions you have. I do see a question that just uh, came in, which okay. um, how much do you save by doing the cremation option? Is there any general like rules of, you know, rules of thumb? Well, just, just in general, in terms of the cremation and in terms of uh, a full casket burial between across the board uh, uh, with the funeral home services, final resting place, and again, all these things vary so, so much. And, uh, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons why you want to begin this pre-planning in advance and now, and because it is a bit of a journey and there's a lot of different information to weigh and to look at. Uh, but, uh, you know, probably, you know, just in a real general, probably 20, 30% of what, of what a full casket uh, arrangements would, would run uh, with cremation. But can also be as much uh, depending uh, on on the, on the final resting place you choose and the services you choose, and both within the services of the funeral home and the final resting places, the costs of all different things vary so much, so so widespread, so dramatically in terms of cost that you know those are the things you want to find out about. And then uh, in, in general, is a, a mausoleum going to be more expensive than an in-ground burial if you do one of those shared mausoleums? Right. Many mausoleums. Uh, and interestingly, so it's one of the things 
people often when they begin pre-planning and we introduce the option of above ground and we introduce the cost and they see the, the cost can be very, very comparable. They're very surprised because that's uh, most people's original thought is that, oh, it's much more expensive, but no, not necessarily so. Um, could you please explain a little about the cremation provider? If one pre-plans, wouldn't the funeral home no one? Mm -hmm. Okay, so with cremation, um, the funeral home and a licensed funeral director will coordinate the actual cremation. Uh, they'll do all the transportation, file all the paperwork with the state, et cetera. Um, and as a certified uh, cremation provider, that whole process is, is audited to make sure that everything happens accordingly. So uh, that'll happen. You, you'll, you'll make those arrangements for the cremation with a funeral home, at a funeral home, with a licensed funeral director. Uh, and when the cremation is completed, uh, the arrangements will have been made with the cemetery for a final resting place for the cremation, whether it be niche or in ground. And, and like I said, there are a lot of different options in terms of the final resting place for the cremation. So you have the funeral director in the funeral home for the cremation itself, and then a final resting place at the cemetery. Thank you. Yes. And yes, and all those things can be paid for in advance. Well, then I guess, I guess we're at the end of our webinar. We give people uh, time back in our hour. Um, and I guess if, um, oh wait, here's something that just came in. Okay. Melinda, were you able to put in that, um, my, my email yeah. somewhere from uh, that? Bruce just okay, did great. it. Bruce did it? Okay, great, thanks. And we have another question. Oh, okay. Can sure. the pre-plan be beneficiary of a life insurance policy? Uh, no, no. Uh, in, in, in the pre-planning, uh, because a, a life insurance policy only gets paid out at time of death. So when people choose to use a life insurance policy to pay for end of life arrangements, again, that's one of those things that happens all within those two, three days. And that's just one more layer of, of the things to work through, of logistics to work through and working with the insurance company uh, to, to, to get those funds available. Uh, and it's very stressful. And again, you know, most people, I think, with life insurance have intended that life insurance to go to their loved ones to go forward with their lives with. So, um, but no, it can't, insurance can't be used in a, in a pre-planning because those, that, those funds are only issued at the time of death. Melinda, do you see any other questions? I don't see any other questions. Okay, well, I want to just um, thank uh, William for, for your time and all this really terrific information and, and Melinda for uh, taking the time to lead the discussion. And then what I'm going to do just as a, a final step is, well, well, two things. One, we are, our next event is um, at Ridge Road Park in Hartsdale on September 30th. We're having a actual uh, senior law day live event uh, outside versus at the county center. And there will have different talks on wills versus trusts, elder law, uh, advocacy, um, and then we will also have an opportunity for one-on-one -on -one consultations. So um, if you want to sign up in advance, you can call 914-813-6300, and we can secure a, a free lunch for you, but it'll be great to be back in person. Hopefully, you know, the outside venue, of course, is much uh, safer than being inside right now at the county center. Um, so with that, I'm just going to thank everyone again and then just launch a quick poll where you can give us uh, feedback. No, thank you, William. Thank this you, everyone. Really thank excellent. you for your time. And uh, have a great day and hope to see you in, uh, in two weeks.